Good morning, everyone. I'm Courtney Guernsey. I'm the Senior Director of Patient Financial Services for Spectrum Health in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, Spectrum Health recently had a merger with Beaumont Health on the west side of the state, so our temporary naming right now is BHSH System, which nobody is fond of, uh, but it is temporary. Um, our system has 22 hospitals, 300 plus outpatient locations, about 64,000 team members across the state, including 11,500 physicians. So we have four divisions. We have Spectrum Health West Michigan, Spectrum Health Lakeland, our new division, uh, Beaumont Health, and then our payer plan, Priority Health. And I'm here to talk about the collaboration between Spectrum Health West Michigan and our payer plan, Priority Health. They did leave me out here hanging alone. They did not come with me today, so I'm going to speak for both sides today. Priority Health actually serves almost the entire state of Michigan. So we have 1.2 million members and over 1 million provider partners. So we joined forces with Priority Health in early 21. We realized there's a problem when we started moving towards more of a value-based or risk-based contracting. And we realized, you know, there wasn't any major aha moment with technology that I'm going to speak about that some of you have spe spoke about yesterday. It was more rather common sense. We were one organization under one corporate system, yet we were fighting each other constantly, and I'm sure some of you can relate to that. The two things that we decided to tackle in the beginning were credentialing turnaround time and the denials process. So we have a delegated credentialing process with Priority Health, and we would have a file exchange that would go back and forth uh, with, the, with the necessary information for priority to process those delegated credentialing. The problem was it was taking upwards of 60 days for Priority Health to get those done. Um, you know, we were having complications on the provider side with impacting our accounts receivables, uh, provider dissatisfaction, payer, or excuse me, uh, patient dissatisfaction, really a negative impact to um, our team members who had to deal with clunky and inefficient processes on both the provider side and the payer side. Uh, so we knew we had to do something to change that. Uh, the patients were experiencing uh, problems as well as the providers uh, because the way the process worked is that until the providers were credentialed in the system, they were not allowed, they were not entered into a database that allowed the patient to select them as their PCP. So without being named as a PCP, they could not enter authorization requests. And as you heard yesterday, authorization requests and achieving authorizations were really essential not only to timely care for the patient, but for getting that care paid for. Um, so it was just really a disaster all the way around. Um, it caused problems across the health system and just a, quite a bit of dissatisfaction. In the denials process, we realized that our payer was using codes that were not consistent. So the denial codes were not consistent with the use of how other payers were using them. What that did is it forced us to be able to have to work all of that work manually. It didn't allow us to automate because it wasn't a standardized process. Um, in addition, we were seeing duplication of efforts. So specifically with coordination of benefit denials, the payer was holding up claims on their end while they did some, act, some proactive due diligence with the patient. Well, we would finally receive the denial quite a bit later, and then, the, and then on the provider side, we would do the same or similar due diligence again with the patient. And once we finally didn't have an outcome with the patient, they would end up getting the balance anyway, and we would have to work through that again in a post-denial scenario. So it was really a lot of waste. As you can imagine, it was a lot of patient dissatisfaction. They were very much in the middle of that process. Um, and, it, and it just cost, cost the system as a whole um, a, lot of, a lot of dollars that were um, not used well. So we started working together in early 2021 toward a shared goal. I think the most essential piece of this was that we were under a shared corporate leadership structure. We had very uh, tight communication with our executives who shared the same outcomes, outcome goals, um, and really relayed those to the group. We met with them on a regular basis who shared their desire for us to work together as a system and to come up with some tangible results. We first brought together a work group with key stakeholders from the credentialing side. Both the provider and the payer sides were engaged. 
We use those work groups as working sessions to discuss the challenges and barriers. And most importantly, and, most, and which was really the most aha moment of the entire session around the credentialing was the standard definitions. So what we found in that work was that the file exchanges that were going between us, that we were all very frustrated with, we all thought were complete on the provider side when we were sending those to the payer. The payer would get those and have tremendous frustration that they didn't have the data elements they needed to complete the delegated credentialing process. That would prompt them to have to do some manual inquiries back to us, uh, wait for us to follow up, and then really that would move to the bottom of their pile while they waited for a response. They would have to come back and revisit that, extending our credentialing time out to 60 days or more. As we worked through that file, we decided that we needed to go through each field and see where did they think we were missing elements and where did we think we were providing them. And it was very evident right off the bat that we didn't have clear shared definitions on what each field in the file was expected to contain. To contain. So although it was populated, it did not contain the information that the, either the provider or the payer, excuse me, was interpreting as the information they needed or that we as the provider thought they needed. So not only was there excess waste in the files, but there was also missing data that was essential to the credentialing process that we didn't realize was not included. So that was, you know, although again, this is not technology related, it was really a collaborative effort to understand each other and understand our terminology. So moving forward, we refined the files. Um, we did focus on automation wherever possible because this is a clunky manual process. So um, wherever we were able to automate that data into a report, um, that was the ideal state. Um, we did something similar with the denials task force. So uh, brought together the key stakeholders from both sides, aligned the use of standard denial codes. So we found that a lot of what we were getting denials on was lumped into a CO16, which was just, you know, kind of the catch-all for everything that they wanted to deny that didn't really have a great code. Um, obviously, again, created manual processes, lack of automation, and just clunky workflows. We decided to work through those things by n implementing a number of things. So not only the fi fixing the file definitions for the file exchange, but also um, really standardizing those definitions of denial codes, having the payer work with us to re-implement those in their system so that when they were denying, they were using a more specific code that we could actually automate and work through and use that tracking and trending um, to go back and evaluate root cause, where if it's a generic code, we couldn't really do that. We were in, kind of in this limbo of having to manually review and do these one-offs to try to find a root cause. Um, we also implemented three-way calling with the patient to mitigate kind of that patient being in the middle of those coordination to benefit issues. So what I mean by three-way calling is exactly what it sounds like. Priority, someone from Priority Health as well as someone from Spectrum Health would get on the phone and we would call the patient together. And we would work through what are the questions that we have for them? Who is their primary insurer? Who is working in the household? Who's, who is um, the Priority Health card holder? Is this related to a TPL, an accident, something like that? Get all those questions answered up front and get the dates clear so that we can get this coverage outlined in one, one phone call. Um, we had significant success with these initiatives. So we had a reduction in dollars held in claims awaiting credentialing, uh, significant decrease in denied dollars. We ended with standardized use of our denial codes and an improved patient and member satisfaction scores. Um, in addition, we, we had developed some additional um, ongoing work. So we developed the Priority Health Spectrum Health Operational Excellence Council. And that is the format that you see up there today. So each of those work streams has a lead from both the payer side and the provider side. You can see they have a set focus for each of the work streams on what they're expected to cover. And then we report back monthly in a executive forum on what things we're working on together as a group and uh, where we may need our executives to help remove some barriers or help make some decisions where we are a little bit stuck. Um, so just continue to work through those processes and we didn't really let it go stale with um, just those two initiatives and I think that's been essential to us continuing to grow together. Um, I'm just about out of time, but I wanted to share 
some of the results. So in that claims awaiting credentialing, we decreased seven, by 76%. Our hold days decreased from initially around 60 days or an average of 45 days to 21, and since then it's down to 10 days. Um, and denied dollars decreased by 74%. And um, that's just in the COB denial code. Other denial codes decreased as much as 72% as well. So just a lot of tremendous opportunities that we found just by collaborating together, just by sitting down and talking to one another and working through some of those hurdles that um, we continued to butt heads with each other. Um, but by sitting down at the table, realizing we all had shared goals and, and shared desired outcomes, uh, we were able to achieve this, these outstanding results and just continue to do that today. And I'm happy to say, you know, what used to be one of our worst pair relationships, uh, which is a bit sad to say being our own pair, um, is now our best. So very excited about those outcomes. And I believe I'm out of time and probably don't have time for questions, but appreciate your time today. Thank you.